For he is a gracious and compassionate God. He is slow to anger and abounding in love. So it's, it's left up to us to do the things that God has told us to do. To turn from our wicked ways. To seek his face. To call upon him. I mean, we live by these kingdom principles and it's for a reason. It's for a reason because they work. They work. He would not have put them in here if they did not. They work. He's given us the antidote. He's telling us what to do. He's calling us. He's, he's, he's pulling us. He's drawing us to him. So we will turn to him and that he will bless us. He can turn this disaster, this devastation that's going on into blessings. He will leave us a blessing. I mean, we're so, we're, we're just teeter-tottering right now. The, the election is coming up. You know, and, and we don't really know which way it's going to go. We can pray, but God says that he holds the hearts of kings in his hand. And he twists and turns them the way that he wants to. Amen. But he told us to pray. We have an obligation to pray. That's what he wants the people of God to do is pray. Because the prayers of the righteous avail as much. Amen. God wants us to pray and to call upon him. Do you actually think that he would sit there and not help us when we call upon his name? That he's a compassionate God. That's just like your earthly father. Do you actually think that you could beg your dad for something and he just turn his back and not give you anything? No. That's not being a loving and kind God. But that's the kind of God that I serve. He's a loving God. He's a kind God. But he, he And he's done everything that he's going to do, so things are left up to us. Yes. Sometimes we think that, okay, well, he's just God. He can do whatever he wants to. Yes, he can. He's God. But he left us instructions. He told us to do something. We need to do something about this. We need to seek him. We need to pray. We need to fast. We need to call out upon his name like never before. I tell you because the generations that's coming behind us, we have to leave them with something. We have to leave them with something. We need to leave them a legacy. They need to know. They need to see our walk. They need to hear us praying. They need to see us helping one another. They need to see kindness and love so that they can remember, well, I know my mom did this. My dad did that. They loved one another. They helped one another. They just didn't say it by mouth, but they did it in deed. They did it in actions. And that's what God is looking for. And like I said, I think there's a shifting, there's a turning. God is saying, return to me. Return to me, and I will heal your land. It's not just good enough for one person or two people to do it, but it's for the whole body of Christ. The whole body of Christ. We can do so much. If it, just, if it was just 12 disciples that turned the world upside down, what in the world? What in the world? The whole body of Christ do. If we did what we were supposed to do, we could turn the world upside down. We could change some things. And God is counting on us to do just that. He's counting on us. So I plead with you like Joel. Joel wanted to awake the people, to provoke them. You know, there was a, a clarion call. He gets and out, he warned them. You know, and God used the locusts back in that day. But there is so much devastation. I mean, I don't even want to think about what God can do because we don't want to fall into the hands of an angry God. We want him to stay compassionate. We want him to stay loving us. We want to call upon him and we want to be obedient. We want to be obedient. We know that blessings are conditional. Amen? God could bless and he will bless. But when we're obedient, our blessings are hinged on our obedience. And God can turn this thing around because there is nothing too small, nothing too hard, Nothing too big for my God. He's a loving God. I thank him for saving me. I thank him for saving my family. I mean, I don't have to wait to thank him now. I, I mean, later after it's done, but 
when he says that he's going to do something, he's going to do it. He said that he will save three generations of my family. And I thank God for that. And I praise him right now. Does it look like all of them are saved right now? No, but the word of God, I know what he said. And I'm going to stand on that until the day that I die. I may be going on to glory, but I believe the Lord's word. He said it, and he's going to do it. Just like he's telling us in the book of Joel to turn from our wicked ways, to turn to him. He will turn this thing around for us. He wants to bless us. He will bless us. And he is able to do just that. My God is able to do just that. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. I praise your holy name, Lord God. I give you all the glory, oh God. In chapter 2, starting with verse this is 20, no, with 30. Starting with verse 30. He says, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Glory to God. We just have to call upon the name of the Lord. I'm telling you, saints, he's a good God. We just have to trust him. We have to believe him. He's an almighty God. Sometimes people just give Satan too much credit. Too much credit. Every time you turn around, the devil did this and the devil did that and the devil did that. Yes, we know he's here. He's doing his job. He's mighty, but God is almighty. God gave us authority and power over the devil. He gave that to us. So when we get sick and tired of being sick and tired, we will do something. We'll stand up for what God says to do. We'll stand up for the truth. And God is with us. He is with us. So we have all the strength that we need. We have all the power that we need. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory to your name, Lord God. I just thank you and I praise you all tonight, O oh Lord. I thank you that you will bless us abundantly, O oh Lord. Down in verse 17, this is in the same uh, second chapter, starting with 17. He says, let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O oh Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn. A byword among the nations. Why should, they, why should they say among the peoples, who is their God? And that's what the world is saying. Some of the people in the world are saying, well, who is their God? They're always praying about this God. They're always talking about this God. But God has given us the power and the authority to tread upon this enemy. The enemy is under our feet. We are victorious in Jesus Christ. He said that we're more than conquerors. That's what the word says, and that's what we are. We are more than conquerors. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? So he wants to bless us, and we need to do what we need to do to turn this thing around. To turn it around so that the Lord will heal the land. He can turn this disaster into blessings. He can leave us with blessings. Yes, he will. And not just for us, but for generations after us to come. My God will do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. 